Americana Song of the Year for Boulevard. Thank magazine you. And I the NJArts.com uh, Brooklyn Come Away. It was number 50. I think that was fairly recent in their list of New Jersey based songs. And it's in there with some some pretty big some pretty big names and some pretty big songs, right? Yeah, yeah. That was uh that was very unexpected. So I'm I'm really grateful uh, for that. That came out a couple of days ago, I think yesterday, two days ago. Yeah. Um and yeah, that, that's that's some incredible company. So I, I was really, really grateful. Um and I think it's it was uh in the top fifty of you know, all time songs out of New Jersey. Yeah. So I don't I don't know necessarily uh how I think, you know, I don't know how I feel about that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> well, you're, I think you're too close to it to, I mean, a lot of the people <laughs> say that. And I, I was going to ask that because I like asking artists this. I asked Jeff this when I spoke to him fairly recently. How do you take when someone says, when you get an award like that or, or somebody get recognition like that, are you able to take that at face value or do you just think, really? Did, did, they, did they mean me? Did they know I'm just kind of this, this chance? Because I always think that, do you, get, do you still have imposter syndrome or have you kind of, got around that a little bit now because i think being able to accept compliments is difficult for some people especially artists but i think it is an important thing because when people give you compliments and include you in these lists they are being sincere you know yeah i appreciate it. i i think there i think there will always be an a, an inherent level of of that you know just because like, even like a song like brooklyn can wait like i'm i'm so grateful for that response you, you know and of course the first thing i, I say is kind of like oh well that's kind of strange i i didn't expect that at all you know i I don't put out these songs thinking, oh, they're going to, this is going to be the Grammy, you yeah. know, but um, I, I think there's a lot to be said about the fact that, you know, I wrote that song when I was just like hunched over here at three in the morning, like exhausted with a cup of coffee, like, let me just write a song. And then I wrote the song the next week when I'm like cutting out all these verses. And, you know, I wrote it when I'm like messing up the bass line in the studio yeah. and stuff. Like I've, I've seen all of these like awkward stages of the song. Uh, and so I think that kind of trains the artist to sort of go, oh, I don't know why they chose that. But I suppose if it's probably a different thing, you know, seeing the finished polished touch. Yeah. Just saying, yep, did it in five minutes. What are you going to do? I'm great. You know, like that type of thing. Um, I think a lot of the time that, that sort of attitude is easier said than done just because we've seen it evolve or not evolve over such a long period of time. Well, I think that that's one thing that I've always sort of the parallel, the main parallel I've always drawn between you and Jackson Brown, and Tom Petty, and those guys is, you know, because obviously you get there's the similarity in the styles sometimes and a similarity sometimes in your vocals, but it's more that work ethic and getting through the catalog. I'm, I'm just getting into Wildflowers now for this next season. So, into the Great Wide Open Wildflowers, it's at that point that Tom it doesn't, he's not chasing hits anymore, right? I mean, obviously, the, well, the label's got one eye on that. But Tom's just looking at the song and he, and he always did sort of, the song is the most important thing. And I always get that sense with you too, that, well, all I have to do is worry about making this next song as good as I can possibly make this next song. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's an incredible way to think. And it's funny, you know, just inherently being a young person doing this, I always get the question of like, what? So, you you know, what do you want to do? Like, you, you want to be at the garden? Like, what what is your yeah. plan? And my, my answer is always just, to do music at, at in some capacity at some point support myself even if it's just on the side whatever because i love it and that's what i want to do yeah. but uh it is uh, that is a, a factor i envy a, a little bit i have to say is like that whole like tom petty thing at when he's coming up with wildflowers or mojo or like any of these albums that are kind of just like a defining point of like holy crap that's what he did yep. when he could do anything he wanted because he was tom petty and he didn't, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he didn't, you know, and again, I, I'm, I, I don't know his mental state at the time, but I'm sure, you know, when you're writing, you, you got to get it. You're going to get it. Like you have to think, all right, well, I kind of need an American girl type song on this. Right. Cause yeah. I would love this record to do that, you know, and I'm, uh, you know, or like even like the Springsteen stuff, I'm a huge fan of um, the Western stars album. Right. Which is like this great kind of off the beaten path concept album that he did that that just kind of blew my mind but i'm not sure you know i don't think he would have been able to do that in the you know i, I think darkness would have had to come out before yeah that, born or on uh so if i was ever able to get to something like that i think that would be a lot of fun well it's, it's funny that you brought that up because you're gonna get it is obviously the second album in the heartbreakers catalog and tom famously said once that you know you get your whole life to write your first album you get nine months to write your second one Right, so you're in that you're in that position where <laughs> exactly right. So you've got down the line, 
is your album that you self-produced and, and wrote and recorded everything yourself and then obviously i think you probably got some mixing done somewhere else but but going into the studio with a, a set of songs now where you sign a record contract and now it's probably a little bit more quote-unquote real it's like oh man i think i've got to bring my a-game now so what was the process for like where did how quickly did that set of songs that become the half left out how long did how quickly did they come together i feel like i kind of I, I feel like i kind of got a redo of that my whole life thing because right. you know the half left uh, uh down the line came out in 2020 i was 16 and i had these songs from when i was 14 15 whatever uh, most of them though were from that year yeah uh, and and i just did it in a soundboard i mixed it myself and i just took out the sd card and put it in the computer that was it like i didn't use any anything like uh, i did it like I think it was like I have a talent of finding the hardest way possible to do something. Uh, and then four years, you know, give or take three years went by. Uh, now I'm working with Golden Retriever Records or whatever. I have these songs over four, three, two years, whatever. Right. They also weren't written for that. It was like, a lot of them were. But, you know, a lot of the songs are pretty old. The Dreamer, I think, was the oldest one. That was from 2021. Yeah. And, and, so it was definitely a little bit more pressure than down the line because it was industry backed and they needed it by a deadline, or whatever. But this album that I'm writing now is really the first one where I'm sitting down and go, you know, the Half Left Out came out in November. Yeah. We're shooting to be recording the next album, you know, sometime late spring, early summer through, you know, maybe to get it out fall, you know, those are all circumstantial right now. But, um, this is the first time I've really felt that sort of like pit in your stomach of like, all right, I hope to get one today, you know. Uh, so I'm excited though. It excites me. Uh, I think it's a different way to write. So when you get into the studio then, the question, I think I'd asked you this maybe when I, because obviously I, I covered it. I did an episode, a non-petty episode. The only one I've done so far, I'm going to do more of those, on Ghosted Road. Thank you. I really enjoyed digging into that song at a, you know, that sort of micro level. And you were very gracious to send me some notes back. But when you go in... Obviously, you've got these songs in either acoustic or piano and some general idea of how you want to arrange them in your head. But how much does, does the studio and the producer and the musicians you're working with affect and, and inform how those arrangements develop in the studio? I, it's really a big help to get other ears on it. I, I've i always tried to make as elaborate demos as I can. Uh, so for...